Samir Arora of Helios Capital needs no introduction with us on the show. Samir, good morning and thanks so much for joining in. Wishing you and your team a very happy new year. Good morning and happy new year to you and all your viewers. Thanks so much, Samir. Would it be a happy new year or would you believe more of what 2018 was like with maybe even more volatility? Actually, 2018 in between was bad, but the end of the year, it wasn't so bad. So I was well, that ends well. And, you know, if you look at investors in India who were looking at, which we are not in that sense because we are dollar investors, but for rupee investors, it was not so bad. Uh, and considering what we went through in September and all, I think overall people would be still grateful. So I think uh, 19 should be okay. Uh, we just need the U.S. markets to stabilize. I think India and other emerging markets may do well this year, but not a runaway rally till this election is out of the way. So it's a good time to not feel overly hyper negative, but it's not running away so soon for sure because of that event that we must negotiate. Samir, um, so th that, that's an interesting point. Uh, do you reckon that the U.S. markets can stabilize? I mean, just looking at the high frequency indicators that are coming out and hitting uh, quite, con quite consistently in the last few days, uh, there are issues across. I mean, not just with the political side, uh, you know, shutdown, et cetera, so on and so forth, but the trade tensions and uh, the growth numbers uh, are all looking like, uh, looking skittish. No, first of all, that you know the growth last year was too high because of the interest uh, tax rate cut and all. So I think they can stabilize just by the Federal Reserve saying that the interest rate cut is either back ended or instead of two, it is one, and they still have that flexibility. Also, uh, Donald Trump would have realized that uh, China is key uh, not only for uh, whatever negotiation he wants to do, but for the U.S. market and for U.S. companies. And so they could all mellow down a little bit, change their conversation a little bit. These things are still within their control unless they really want to go head to head uh, beyond a limit. So both China and US would realize that it's to their benefit to stay. Of, of course, they will still have to negotiate many things, but not to take very hard stance on uh, you know some of these issues because ultimately Donald Trump has himself admitted publicly that he thinks that the stock market is a reflection of what is happening in his presidency. So I think it can happen. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're reversing everything, but right now India mark, Indian market does not need the US market to do very well. It just needs it not to fall every day, one or two percent. And you know, the, in that environment, we can outperform maybe and we will, but we can't go up. So that's why we just we want them to stabilize. That can happen, why not? It's not that bad. Uh, Samir, just uh, and good good morning to you, Devina. I wish you a very happy new year. Just you know, uh, bringing in you, uh, bringing in back to the point that you made, and whether or not when the, the fall that we saw in 2018, which started in the month of August, you saw uh, uh, crude oil move up, currency collapsing, our own equity markets falling. At that time, it, it was pretty uh, stable for the U.S. markets. In fact. Quite contrary, they were moving higher and making new highs uh, for the S&P 500, for the Nasdaq. Uh, we course corrected from there while the U.S. was still doing what it was doing and it was making new highs. Do you think that we need to worry too much even if U.S. course corrects from here? Well, that is because we get money from U.S. U.S. doesn't give us money and, you know, we are a 1% of the world or two percent of the world, they are forty odd percent of the world in terms of stock market uh, weightages. So we don't have the same situation with them. That just because when we were falling, they were not falling. Therefore, the other way around can happen. Because my thinking is that if that market was really doing badly, say down ten, fifteen percent, I don't think people are at that time super desperate to say now I want to put money outside. You, you've seen every time that there's a problem in U.S. Actually, their currency strengthens rather than weakens. Uh, the best situation or the funniest was in 2011, I think it was, when the U.S. Uh, AAA rating was downgraded by one of these guys, I think S&P, and we thought, wow, now the rupee will strengthen. And the rupee weakened by some 20% in three months because people said, oh, we are going back to safe haven and stuff like that. You don't want them to be in a bad shape. You just want them to maybe do less well than us and not to dramatically outperform their own uh, you know, other alternative asset classes so that money doesn't get sucked into U.S. But we can't hope and wish that 
uh, you know, U.S. does badly, therefore people will leave U.S. and come to the rest of the world. It doesn't happen that way, I think. No, uh, you know, n not the fact that you would expect the money to come to our shores, which in any case has, uh, you know, eluded us. Foreign money has not come to us in a meaningful way uh, since quite some time now. But uh, whether or not it, the situation is as worrisome as it, it looks at this point. So as I said, I don't think it is. But for, if for whatever reason their stock market falls 10%, 5%, we cannot outperform in that pay. I'm sorry, we can outperform, but we cannot have positive returns, I think. So best would be that U.S. stabilizes, maybe corrects a little, but not this violent kind of a move. And if there's a violent kind of move, the positive for the short term can be that this high volatility will make the Federal Reserve a little bit defensive about raising rates in the middle of that. And B, it might temper down the aggression of Donald Trump vis-a-vis -vis China. So this is how I'm interpreting it today. Okay, let's wait and watch. Uh, uh, back home, Samir, uh, does this uh, does this conversation about direct dole out or some large, uh, you know, cash transfer to the rural sector or farmers worry you on the fisc side so much that it would make you? change a bullish market view, presuming that you have a bullish market view on India from your answers? I have a bullish market view, huh. but I don't think this will change it because A, I think time is running out. So let us say if, for the government in terms of currently doing it, they can make announcements now, they can't really do much more. Let's say they say that we will pay X amount to farmers if they own one acre of land. I'm not 100% sure whether we exactly know who has this one acre of land and whether it should be given to the head of the family or to two brothers if they own it together or, you know, these things will take time to solve. So they can make announcements and maybe send out a little money. And so it will not be so important. Also, will they consolidate some other schemes when they propose this scheme or will this be totally additional? And then it depends on how much they do it and, you know, as I said, the phasing of that and what is the positive impact of that on rural consumption and otherwise. Because generally, in a big picture sense, I think that urban India has to, in some form or the other, transfer a little bit of wealth to rural India. Because we are not creating jobs for these people to be taken off the farm. There is no urbanization where these guys can move. And uh, it's just the reality, whether right or wrong, that something has to be done to keep the whole system moving together. Samir, uh, talking about specific themes, specific pockets, uh, and obviously, you know, uh, the, the eye of the storm is now in the auto pack and what's been happening, not just the last 10 days, but you saw early indicators um, last few months when the auto sales numbers started to come off. I mean, people blamed uh, a, a delayed festive season, uh, pe people blamed uh, high interest rates and said that, you know, uh, uh, you know, the cost of ownership is high, so it looks like people are pushing forward their uh, purchasing decisions. But now you've got the numbers which are definitely looking uh, way lower than what the street was expecting. How would you play this now? So we are net maybe zero, uh, maybe net negative because we short also many stocks. And so one of the bigger stocks that have fallen this year in three days, we have a big short position. So in general, the thing is that uh, we still have Maruti, uh, but mostly we are short everything else. Uh, and it is a reflection of the fact that there was a weak uh, festive season and generally whatever else you've read that, you know, inventories are high and that NBFCs created some issue and maybe uh, oil prices at that time in September, October were high. Who knows? Generally, it does reflect that there has uh, not been a very good uh, season. But again, if the rural economy improves and in general things improve, uh, it'll, it'll be all right. I don't think it's a hot sector and worthy of too much attention in a, in a portfolio beyond 5-7%, even if somebody has. Nobody's going to have 15% in auto anyway, I think. Uh, but with auto ancillaries and maybe some others, you can have a little bit higher weightage than 5.7. So it's just one of the smaller sectors, actually, but it's a reflection of the fact that the consumer has not been very strong. Hmm. So if, if autos, according to you, is the smaller sector, probably, uh, you know, where is the larger concentration now and how do dynamics change on there? The best thing in India is that we have a very good financial sector. If you see the private sector banks, the which you know, 
I've been saying for only 20 years, and these one of these stocks have only 1,000 times since then. But still, these are the best because they take you where the growth is. And that is the best thing about these two, three stocks, that if there is growth in auto, they will finance auto. And if there's growth in mortgage, they'll become there or indirectly, or if there is in personal consumption, or if somebody changes to uh, corporate growth, it'll take you there also. So you don't have to overly worry yourself that right now, you know, Apple phones are selling, but I don't have a way of playing Apple. Okay, so they'll be funding Apple phones there if, if that was happening, which it is not these days in regard to Apple phones. But what I mean is, so we always have liked private sector financials as a number one theme, uh, private sector banks as the number one theme, and it's been with us for maybe 15, 18 years. Interesting. Samir, so uh, this, uh, your, your view on financials, and I'm guessing banks didn't change too much, but your view on financials, um, has it changed post RNFS? Is there a version 1.0 and version 2.0 pre and post RNFS? Yeah, but before that, even in private sector banks, mm -hmm. it has changed a little bit in the last five, six months, as in now we also own two corporate banks. Because, you know, some of these things are not because anybody has changed and the management which they may have changed and they have changed, but it's just time. Because the NPAs you can only create if you lend to corporate long gestation projects and those projects have not been there. So your ability to make uh, those kind of big chunky bets and then fail on them have come down and then time also has taught everybody what to do in that sense so that has changed in our private sector bank exposure we don't reduce you just add it to two new names and on nbfc's we have uh, now a one or two shorts also which we never had for five four five years that we were so we used to have around in the good old days till august maybe 13 14 percent in nbfc's four five of them and now, and no shorts. And now with shorts, we might have maybe six, seven percent. So that way, yes, it has changed. And the reason for that is that we are still, uh, even though all these companies will in the end survive with dignity, the issue is we don't know how the market will now react to the fact that you have survived, but your earnings have changed, your growth has changed, your model going forward has changed, and so that reset, even we don't know exactly at what you know numbers or levels with everything become like a new round of NBFC growth. But they will all survive and they will all do well. But this readjustment will take some time. I mean, I, I'm just wondering, have you changed or taken fresh bets? I don't want to get into names, but have you taken fresh bets in the NBFC space post RNFS? I mean, where you have been able to analyze what the new version of some of these survivors that's would be? Saying. See, that's what I'm saying. We have taken new bet I means we were already in this sector. This was one of our True. pain points. Have you changed it? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, we were about 13 net, 13 gross or net because we didn't have a shot. And now we are maybe six or seven because we have reduced one name from the long side and we've added two names on the short side. So therefore, uh, now in a sense, our exposure is less uh, and it's a bit controlled and we have to see how it goes and then maybe first take off the shorts. But that depends, as I said, depends on how the market will now interpret the fact that earnings growth, which was supposed to be 20 odd percent, will now, let's say, be 10 or maybe negative for this quarter. And how will the market react to that even though they may say that the worst is over but you know we also don't know whether to think that in march quarter will be okay or in june quarter will be okay and also the model itself in terms of leverage in terms of uh, lib asset liability mismatch what will you do will you change uh, and they have changed the rates what happens to the developers so our nbfcs today are called nbfcs but you know like one of them is bajaj finance which is not really affected so that one, we are not overly hyper on the long side, but on the other ones, we have uh, mellowed down, I guess. Yes. Hmm. All right. Uh, you know, just uh, got time for the uh, last few questions, Samir. But um, does it make sense right now, considering that we've you know, projected volatility in the near term, um, in the backdrop of the elections coming up, and other global factors as well? Uh, does it make sense to be a little bit more defensive in a portfolio? or that probably isn't the route that you'd like to take? The thing is that 
you know some people can do that by just putting less amount of money but to buy a different stock for two or three months i we don't like that idea so for us for example we may have five seven extra percent short which or ten percent which we can change if the world wants to preempt the elections right away uh, but we won't change the stock selection for a two three month this thing saying that after april we do something else if the company is otherwise good but it is being held by the back by the fact that the market itself is not going up or doesn't want to go up that is easier to analyze and imagine than to say let's buy stock a and then may we will move to stock b so we don't become defensive that way we just will take away some of our shorts Okay, so for so, us, it's easier to react to these events. But for a normal investor, we would say, okay, yeah. if you have to put hundred rupees in, put eighty, but don't change the mix of what you would like to. Own, no, so so okay, so probably if I I to change it a bit and say that, uh, is it worth having any defenses in the portfolio at all, leaving aside volatility? What do they mean by defensive? Because we don't know what is defensive. Uh, you could say that the consumer is actually very high, va highly valued, and the cheapest is an NBFC today because they have gone through a pain and survived. We never do like that. Bottom line is that there are certain strong secular themes in India, and it's easiest to just stay with them. And those, in a big picture sense, are financials and consumer. And once in a while, because something is happening to currency and this and that, a little bit of tech. Otherwise, the forever. You will find that the best, strong, most secular, long-term themes are uh, consumer and financials, and consumer as broadly defined, which means even two-wheelers is consumer, four-wheeler is consumer, but not trucks, and uh, you know consumer durable, and even media is consumer. So, if broadly defined, these are the two themes, and we will never change them. Whatever may happen to the government, whatever may happen, but you could be on the short side. You know, sometimes metal short, sometimes NBFC short, sometimes telecom short, whatever. But those are more temporary than the long side. Interesting, Samir Dora. Pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us your outlook. Lovely having you. Thanks, sir. That's the view from Samir Dora of Helios Capital.